Soda is quite the amazing treat, don't you think? When you go shopping at the grocery, you might think that there's, wow, there's over a hundred different soda brands. But did you know that Coca-Cola actually owns about 3,500 independent brands that also go international? So it's not just Coca-Cola. If you want to, if you're an enemy against Coca, I'm not buying Coke, then you might be in trouble because Coke owns quite a big chunk of the soda industry. On another interesting note, Japan apparently has a very uh, good enjoyment of making very novel sodas. Some flavors in the land of the rising sun include yogurt, green tea, octopus, wasabi, cheese, and many more. I gotta be honest, I am a little bit interested in trying the cheese drink. Let's move on. Number 9. 7-Up and Lithium. Lithium citrate is a drug that basically is used to help control depression and bipolar disorder. In today's society, it does require a prescription. However, quite a few years ago, it was used in medicated beverages such as 7-Up. Of course, they stopped putting lithium into 7-Up in 1948, and they are unsure about where the name 7-Up came from. So, you know, heads up, 7-Up. It's going to make you feel really good. That is if you drank it about 50, 60 years ago. Number 8, Dr. Pepper. The 23 flavors inside of Dr. Pepper has been the world's most culinary mysteries since its creation, really. No one really knows what the 23 flavors are, although some people would speculate that it's prune juice. While this is a claim that has been denied, the other flavors are still up for grabs, like vanilla, caramel, strawberry, lemon, and, of course, cola. You know, all that good stuff. The official website of Dr. Pepper simply states that Dr. Pepper is a unique blend of 23 different flavors, so I guess it will forever be... A mystery. Number seven, grossest soda. All right, all right, I know what you're thinking, but Billy, there is no such thing as the world's grossest soda because taste is extraordinarily subjective. Well, you might be right, except for maybe this one. If you think taste is extraordinarily subjective, why don't you go out and try Beverly? That's right, Beverly. It was made for the uh, Italian market as a soda choice for those crazy Italians over there. And it has been deemed as the worst soda in the world. You can try it here in America at the Coca-Cola Museums in Las Vegas or Atlanta. And the YouTube is apparently filled with videos of people trying this horrible soda. It has been described as one of the most bitterest... Is that a word? It is now. Bitterest sodas in the entire world. So. If you think you can handle bitter drinks, why not give Beverly a try and post it on YouTube and see what the world thinks. In fact, we might do a Beverly challenge sometime in the near future. You know, I can't say for sure, but it might be coming. Number six, Passover Coke. The Passover is a Jewish festival that celebrates the Jews' exodus from uh, Egypt. As a part of this festival, the one thing that Jews cannot eat is certain types of grain and corn and certain types of beans. As a result, you can no longer enjoy Coca-Cola. That is, until Coca-Cola made Kosher Coke. It is a Coke that is released in March and April to coincide with the Jewish Passover, and it is sweetened with pure cane sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup like it is in America. But let's be honest, shouldn't it always have been sweetened with real sugar instead of just high fructose corn syrup? Because that stuff is never good for you. But staying on topic of soda and just weird facts about it, let's move on to number five. Number five, variable priced Coke machines. So in the late 90s, Coca-Cola had the bright idea to install machines that dispense soda like a vending machine, but here's the catch. They would raise the price when the temperature went up. 
by an automatic sensor inside the machine that would detect the temperature outside. So when the mercury rose, so did the price. However, people figured this out pretty quickly and Coke retracted all of these machines at about three months after they came out. Number four, Magic Can. In the summer of 1990, Coke announced their promotion as part of the Magic Summer promotion, basically, they made this can that was called the Magic Can. It had spring-loaded mechanisms that when you opened up the can, it would shoot out a prize, such as cash or concert tickets. And to keep people from finding out which can was the winning can, they installed chambers filled with chlorinated water. Unfortunately, these mechanisms were not always 100% reliable, and had countless numbers of people ended up drinking the chlorinated water. It wasn't toxic or poisonous, however, it was very unpleasant tasting. And it resulted in at least one family making a nice unexpected trip to the hospital. Coca-Cola then printed advertisements letting people know to please carefully read the instructions on the can. But, unfortunately, the Magic Can promotion folded after just three weeks of being launched. Number three, Pepsi Points. This kind of coincides with the Magic Can concept. In 1996, Pepsi released their own fun little idea called Pepsi Points. Basically, buying a certain amount of Pepsis would earn you a certain amount of points, which can then be redeemed for prizes such as t-shirts and hats and other useless garbage, essentially. One of their advertisements, which I will link down below, featured a jumbo jet available for their winnings. If you had 7 million Pepsi points, you could buy this jumbo jet, which retail value at about 33.8 million dollars. But one little clever college student once realized that there is a loophole to this gimmick. You can buy Pepsi points directly from Pepsi at just 10 cents a piece. So that made this very expensive jumbo jet now only $700,000. He gathered up a bunch of investors and turned over the check for, to Pepsi for his jet. Pepsi refused to give him his jet and so the case was taken to court. In 1999, the judge basically ruled that no reasonable person could have ever expected to win the prize. Unfortunately for those guys, they did not get their je jumbo jump jet, and uh, Pepsi did not have to give it to them. Although I think in all fairness, Pepsi should have given them the jumbo jet because, hey, they were clever enough to figure out your loophole in your own system that you created. It's not their fault they were being smart. Number two, diet cocktails. Recently, Northern Kentucky University did a study on the effects of diet cocktails versus regular soda cocktails, and they found out, dum da da dum diet cocktails can get you 18% more drunker, if that's a word. That's the word that was used in the original article. It says drunker. I don't think that's a word, but I, maybe it is. The effects were studied with a soda called citrus, you know, they had to be anonymous, or a squirt, and then they used diet squirt. <laughs> it's a very strange way to word it, but that's, that's what the study called it. Uh, basically, it had two groups of people, one drinking a cocktail with regular soda, and the other one drinking a cocktail with diet soda. And they found out that the participants' blood alcohol content that of the people who drank the diet soda cocktail was way higher than the ones who drank the non-diet soda cocktail. The science behind this is simple. Basically, the sugar content in a non diet soda acts as food for your body which makes the alcohol run through your veins just a little bit slower number one nazi fanta when trade embargoes of nazi germany separated from coca-cola deutschland headquarters in atlanta georgia they uh found that the ingredients to make coke quickly disappeared so the man who ran the operation, Max Keith, made a soda that could be produced out of the ingredients they did have, which was mostly odds and ends, you know, beet juice, apple fibers, uh, byproducts of cheese, pretty much essentially garbage, uh, which is now called Fanta, or the German word of Fantasy. I think I said that right. Who knows? 
It said that the original ingredients would probably taste something like soap or dish soap or laundry soap to modern palates. It's a good thing they did upgrade the recipe or else that would be probably quite disgusting. So there's the story of Fanta and other fun facts about soda. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure that if you want a specific type of list to be read off next that you leave it in the comments below. We're going to be trying to do more of these to see how well they work and I have fun recording them and people say I have an amazing radio voice. So I'll give my narration skills a bit of a workout if you will. I know this is only the first one and it probably sounds a little bit cringeworthy. Hopefully not and hopefully you guys learned something today. And I guess that's about it. So without further ado, I'll catch you all in the next one. And as always, stay clear-sighted, my friends. Have a fantastic day. Goodbye, everybody.